Hello, welcome to the second day of this lesson. Today we're going to learn about parabolas. Now before we learn about parabolas, what we do have to do is learn a little bit more uh, or remember some stuff. Now x minus 3 squared is like x minus 3 times x minus 3. If I follow this out, this will be x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 or x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now take a second and pause the video and do these three on your own. Alright, hopefully people have paused the video. Now to do this one on your own, you're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. This one will be y squared plus 18y plus 81. And this one would be x squared minus 2hx plus h squared. Now let's see if we can find a pattern. Well, we can take this number and multiply it by 2 and get the number in front of the y. We can take that number and 9 squared will give me 81. So that's how I can find the, the coefficients here. Um, so we call these things perfect squares, and they follow this pattern. Now if I want to go in the opposite direction, I have x squared minus 10x plus 25. Which perfect square is this? Well, we can take half of 10, or actually I should say half of negative 10, and we can square root 25. Now, both of these should give you the number x minus 5. Well, this one is actually a positive 5, but both, maybe I should say x squared equals 25. Um, so we could get a negative 5 there. But this is the same thing as x minus 5 squared. All right, take a second, pause the video, do these two on your own. All right, the top one will be x plus 6 squared because half of 12 is 6, and square root of 36 is 6. The next one is going to be y minus 1 squared. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Square root of, um, of 1 could, I guess, be negative 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1. Now, I just said something mathematically incorrect, and I just want to clear something up here. Um, the square root of 1 is always 1. However, if I have x squared is equal to 1, that answer can be both negative 1 and positive 1. Some people get this confused, um, and they think the square root of negative 1 is both positive and negative. And if it's just written like that, like I said, um, there's only one answer for that, just 1. However, what I should be saying is x squared equals 1. The two values could be 1 and negative 1. All right. Now, we want to write this quadratic equation in vertex form. The problem is vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared uh, plus k. So we want to write in this form, so we have to have some perfect square here. So let's look at this equation, and I'm just going to put a little space here what value would I have to add to this to make it a perfect square? Just this first, these first two. Hopefully you're saying 4. Now if I add 4, I just can't throw a 4 in. What I, if I add 4 there, I have to also subtract it out somewhere else. So I can write this equation. This whole thing can be reduced to x plus 2 squared, and this whole thing will be plus 2. So I've written this quadratic equation in vertex form uh, where we have y equals x plus 2 squared plus 2. All right, if you understood that last one, pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. So what will I add here? Hopefully you take half of this and square it to get to 16. So if I add it, I have to also subtract it on the right. 
So y is going to equal, this would be x plus 4 squared, and now we have to subtract 18. Now we just flip-flop the x's and y's. Uh, we'll have y squared plus 2y plus some number. That number is going to be 1, because half of 2 squared is 1. Put that on both sides. So now I have x is equal to y plus 1 squared plus 4. Again, another one. This one gets a little tricky because this middle one is um, an odd number. So x squared plus 7x plus something. Now, it might help to go to this next level. Because what I do is I take 7 halves to be that number. And so to get this number up here, what I have to do is take 7 halves squared, which is 49 fourths. So if I add 49 fourths, I have to subtract 49 fourths, just like I didn't do here. Oh, good. I was just thinking that I think I just added it. Hopefully, you saw that mistake. Jeez. It's minus 1, so this should be plus 2. I, um, so over here, um, if I add it here, I have to subtract it out there. So 3 minus 49 fourths. Well, 3 is the same thing as um, 12 fourths. So I guess I should go back to red. So 12 fourths minus 49 fourths <laughs> would get us to a negative 37 fourths. And you know, 9 times 4 is 36, so this would be like 9 and 1 fourth negative. All right, try this one on your own. All right, we have y squared plus 3y plus something minus 4. So if we go to this next row, y plus 3 halves squared. So what I need to add here to make it a perfect square would be 9 fourths. So if I add it there, I have to subtract it there. So uh, 4 would be um, 16 fourths. 16 minus 9 would be 25 fourths. Now, 25 fourths, hopefully you know that is, um, 6 times 4 is 24, so being negative 6 and 1 fourth. All right, now if we wanted to graph these things, we have a unit parabola where we have y equals x squared. Hopefully everybody has this one uh, mastered. Now, if I flip the x and the y value, so it's x equals y squared, now it's going to be a uh, parabola out to the right. Now, keep in mind, another way you can remember this is if I draw my y equals x line, this flips, this is just this thing flipped over because we switched the x's and y's. So if you can't remember which direction, just take your normal parabola, draw um, y equals x line, and draw your points, and then see that it would go out to the right. So for vertex form, you can write it like this or like this, depending if you're solving for x or if you're solving for y. If a is positive, the parabola opens up if it's this equation, and to the right if it's this equation. If a is negative, the parabola opens down if it's this equation. To the left, if it's this equation. So A tells you which way it opens. The vertex is always at HK. All right, so here we're going to complete the square, um, put the parabola into vertex form, determine which way the parabola opens, and then do a quick sketch. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, put it into vertex form.
So here I'll have to add 4, so then I'll have to subtract 4. So y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 5. Now if I, if I, if I look at this, my a is positive. It has a y equal, so it opens up. Now a quick sketch. My center is at 2, 5. and it opens up. So it'll look something like that. All right, now this one is a little bit different because that three is out in front. So what I would do is I'd start and I'd take a three out of the whole equation. So now, let's just work with this inside. So I have x squared minus 6x. I have to add something to that. Um, now, actually, I'm doing this in a way that I don't like. I'm going to start over. You could do it that way. There's just something I don't like about it. I would just, it's easier if I just take the 3 out of those two. So it would be 3x squared minus 6x. And let's leave that plus 9 on the outside. So now, what I have to add in here is going to be another plus 9. Now this gets a little confusing, because when I add a plus 9 in here, I'm just not adding 9 to this side of the equation. I'm adding a 3 times 9, which is a 27. So I have to subtract a 27 on the outside. So now I'll have y equals 3, x minus 3 squared, and then 9 minus 27 is negative 18. Since a positive number, this is going to open up. And now we just have to make a sketch. All right, so let's throw, make all of these negative. So 3, negative 18 will be a point here. And now we're going to have it go up. We're going to learn more specifically how this goes up as the chapter goes along. But this is good enough for right now. Um, now we have uh, this equation. I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. I have x equals, I can factor out a negative 4 out of this, leaving y squared plus 4y. What I have to add here would be a positive 4 to make it y plus 2. But really, I'm not adding a positive 4. Really, I'm doing a, putting a 4 times a negative 4, which is a, another minus 16. So this would be negative 4 times y plus 2 squared. And this would be, let's subtract, um, what is that, 33? Now this one, since it has x and a negative, this one's going to open to the left. Now this gets also a little confusing in how you graph it with an x. It's not exactly what people think. In the y direction, you go the opposite of what you think you should do in the y, so you'd go down 2, and exactly what you'd do in the x direction, which is to left 33. So let's do 10, 20, 30. So now once we're out here, we said it's going to open to the left, so it'll look something like that. All right, tonight we have a homework, uh, a worksheet. Hope this helps out.